Let's bring you some breaking news coming out of New Delhi. India's top court has given its verdict on the disputed Ayodhya religious site, which is claimed by Hindus and Muslims. Now we understand it's ruled. Muslims should be given two hectares of land for a mosque at an alternative site. The central government is to take control of the land and prepare a road map in three months to set up a board of trustees. Possession of inner and outer land is to be given to the government-appointed trust. The court says the right of temple construction on the disputed property is subject to the maintenance of peace and law and order and tranquility. The government is to take measures for maintaining peace and harmony and law and order. So Anshal Vora joins us now live from New Delhi. So first of all, there's a lot to unpack here. Anshal, first of all, basically, has it clearly ruled on the question of ownership, not just possession? Who owns this land now, which is what the court was supposed to be deciding? Well, you know, not... Uh, we haven't heard from uh, from the court on that exactly, and the court has been careful in what it has said. Although I will uh, add a caveat here that we could perhaps wait for a little longer to read the judgment ourselves and report accurately on it. However, I have spoken to the analysts to understand the same uh, uh, um, uh, gap, and they say that the land is being the disputed land, Sammy, is being given to a board of trustees, government-appointed trustees. Uh, this board would be formed in three months, and this board essentially will decide how to go about the construction of a Ram temple there. This is how the analysts are understanding the bits of judgment uh, that uh, we can confirm to the viewers right now, which means that the disputed land is being given to the Hindu side. Now, to this case, there were three claimants one is Lord Ram, Deity Ram himself, and the court in, uh, in the proceedings today said that Ram is a legal entity. Uh, and the other was Nirmohi Akhara, a group of Hindu activists. And the third was the Sunni Waqf Board, the Muslim group. The court has uh, said that the, the Akhara people, the Hindu activists, uh, their claim is not uh, legit. And they've kept uh, uh, Lord Ram and uh, the Sunni Waqf Board as the two claimants, and uh, uh, essentially thereby also saying that the, the land would be uh, divided between these two. Uh, but it has not been divided, to clarify. It's been given to a board of trustees, which will then decide how to proceed uh, uh, with the construction of the temple. This is the analysis of legal experts. This is what I'm picking up from them. Muslims will get five acres or two hectares of land somewhere else in the state of Uttar Pradesh, which, which is where this disputed land is, and that's where they would be able to build a mosque. Where that site would be would, could be decided by the central government. It could also be decided by the state government. Now, when we'd gone to Ayodhya, we'd actually found out uh, that Muslim uh, intellectuals had already offered this when the mediations took place earlier this year as a possible solution to have broader a peace between the two communities. All right, but just to clarify here, is the way that this is being characterized, at least in the Indian media, is that this is a site where a mosque once stood for hundreds of years, and it's now a board of trustees is going to decide how to build a temple there or simply what to do with the land. Well, how it's being understood here, whether you talk about the Indian press or whether we talk about the analysts that we're speaking to, is that it's going to be a board of trustees. It will be with a board of trustees, which will be formed in three months. This we are clear on. And the analysis is that this board of trustees would go ahead with the construction of a temple in given time. Uh, this analysis, the reason behind this analysis is because the court has already clearly said that the Muslim side, the Sunni Waqf board, will get an alternative piece of land. So that's where this analysis uh, uh, is uh, really emerging from. So in, in a sense, the court has been slightly vague, or maybe it hasn't been. I would like to um, um, paraphrase there and would like to wait for the complete uh, verdict and read it myself. But, yeah, that's how the Indian press and the Indian analysts are reading the judgment, that... The disputed land will be with a board of trustees who would then go about the construction of Ram Temple. You're right, this is where, for 400 years, before 92, 
Babri Mosque stood. Uh, that is understood. But the court has uh, uh, also said that the demolition of mosque in 92 was a violation of law. Uh, uh, it has also spoken about how Muslims prayed in the inner courtyard and the Hindus prayed in the outer courtyard um, of this uh, edifice. And they've also gone on to say that Sunni Waqf board could not prove exclusive rights uh, and uh, uh, that uh, it was not. So when it when this began, Sammy, in 92, after Babri Mosque was demolished, the first court, uh, the first case that went to the court was whether there was a temple there, whether a mosque was built on top of a temple. But later it was converted into a title suit, which is who does it belong to. Um, but in this verdict, the court has also spoken about that, uh, uh, according to the Archaeological Survey of India, a temple existed at the site and that temple was not demolished to build a mosque. However, under the underlying structure where the mosque was built back in, uh, if I'm right, 1600, 1700 centuries, 400 years ago, that uh, uh, was, there was an underlying structure. The Archaeological Survey of India's findings do not specify whether this structure was a temple or not. However, the court has went went on and said that the Hindus for uh, hundreds of years have believed that to be the uh, birthplace of uh, Lord uh, uh, Ram or deity, Hindu deity Ram. How, uh, what sort of reaction are we getting to this? Because the optics of it obviously are not going to look very uh, good for Muslims in India and perhaps for Muslims around the region. Well, yes, you know, the, a lot of calls have been made for peace. A lot of security arrangements have been put in place. But, you know, uh, in the run-up to this verdict, we'd gone to Ayodhya and we spoke to a lot of Muslim people. Uh, you hear one thing in Ayodhya and you hear something quite different in the rest of the country. In Ayodhya, there is uh, a lot of uh, Hindus and Muslims live next door to each other. They're very friendly and they say we have got no issues. Whatever the verdict is, we're going to accept. But it's the outsiders. When they say the outsiders, they mean that... Uh, members of the uh, Hindu groups uh, could come in and, and cause some trouble. Um, and outside of Ayodhya, you know, we hear these noises, but not while we are there. The reaction is something that cannot be judged. However, people on the ground have said that they would like to maintain peace, that they would accept whatever Supreme Court's uh, verdict is. And Muslim intellectuals that we had interviewed said that the mediations that took place earlier this year, uh, uh, in those mediations, they said that they would agree to such a settlement, and we've reported on this before, uh, and the settlement being that you give Muslims a, a piece of land somewhere else, and there we could build a mosque that could be a possible solution. And the Hindu uh, activist groups have also agreed to this uh, solution. The Hindu activist group, uh, um, the, it's, it's a group called the VHP, which played a huge role, or at least accused of playing a huge role in the demolition of Babri Mosque. They say uh, they did not actively ask their members to do it, but it somehow happened. Um, so these two groups had some sort of a pre-understanding, it seems, before this verdict was given, and, and the Muslim intellectuals have clearly, in this case, played some sort of a role because they are the ones compromising. However, they said that their precondition is that this should not set a precedent for all other uh, uh, sites, which means uh, that if Hindu activists claim that other sites like uh, Mathura and Kashi, these are other areas in India where Hindu groups say that there is a mosque very close to a temple and it should just be a mosque, uh, these are some sort of claims that are made. So the Muslim intellectuals... Have All right, we apologize. We lost uh, Anchel there. Well, let's take a closer look at uh, some of the background to this controversy, which Anchel was trying to explain to us there. The dispute dates back to 1855 over the ownership of about a hectare of land claimed by both sides, the Hindus and Muslims. Well, Hindus believe it's the birthplace of one of their main deities, Lord Rama. Hindu groups say a temple was demolished to build a mosque in the 16th century, known as Babri Masjid. In 1992, hardline Hindus who wanted to build a temple there demolished the mosque. And that sparked violence across the country. 2,000 people were killed, most of them Muslims. In 2010, judges in the Allahabad High Court ruled that the land on which the mosque once stood should be divided into three equal parts one for Muslims and two for Hindus. But later that year, both groups mounted a legal challenge in the Indian Supreme Court. Sanjay Kapoor is editor of Hard News magazine. He joins us now from New Delhi. Good to have you with us. So what do you make of what we've heard so far from this ruling that 
basically this land will be handed over to a government trust that is being characterized at least uh, as a trust that will decide how to turn the site of a mosque which was demolished by a mob into a Hindu temple. Yeah, this is the uh, judgment which was uh, expected, but I don't think there is a great amount of legal work that has gone into coming to the judgment from a very cursory reading of uh, what has been coming. Because if you flow the, uh, see the flow of uh, the observations from the Supreme Court, they said on matters of belief, uh, the court cannot arbiter. They can only arbiter on matters of uh, titles, who owns the land. And from there, you know, they, you know, certainly, certainly they encourage some kind of a legal intervention, suggesting that who owns the land. And there is still a lot of confusion on who actually owns the land. But at the end that they have decided, I think this is a, a judgment which has flown out of the mediation that they had ordered way back in May. And uh, long before the courts got into it, the Muslims are willing to give up their land if there was a guarantee of sorts that the other disputes will not be opened up. Fundamentally, the ones in Mathura and, and Kashi, the, uh, the, which is the parliamentary constituency of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where too, again, you have a Hindu temple as well as a Muslim mosque uh, standing cheek by jowl. And they are like really, really major flashpoints which could emerge if uh, the majority community Hindus are triumphalist after this judgment. So it is a judgment which will uh, be very closely watched. There would be a lot of uh, interpretation which will come in. But very clearly, I could see a fallacy of undistributed middle, which was showing up for even for an untrained legal mind, as a journalist who's been watching it for, a, for many, many years, which suggests that it flew in a certain direction, it was going in a certain direction, and the conclusion seemed to be a bit different. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, people who have been exhausted by this very protected uh, the process, that the trial as well as many, many cases that have come up from time to time, would take uh, the entire judgment in their stride and get on with their life because now the Muslims have been offered five acres in, in, uh, uh, in the same city, Ayodhya, and the Muslims uh, would probably take heart from the fact that there is a recognition that there's been some kind of harm that has been done to the cause, because for a long right, time, if, if both I could the jump Hindus in there, and though, the used to pray we're the kind of mixing here now two things. One is the, the communal consultations which were going underway, and the Muslim communities uh, offer uh, to, to give up the land, but that was in return for a request of guarantees that any mosques pre, I think it was 1991, would not have their legitimacy challenged. We've had no indication that, uh, indeed, a court is not the, the venue for that sort of political deal, and we've had no indication that that sort of guarantee has been given by any authority, right? Just to be clear. Yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, the court is uh, not a place where these kind of guarantees can be made. I mean, these, uh, what, what has to be brought to the fore on this issue has to come from the government now. As the Supreme Court has said that law and order has to be maintained and a lot of things have to be done. So I'm sure uh, the government could take cognizance of this. But th that is part that, of the okay, crux of this problem, though. That ha quiet. Has anyone, from a law and order perspective, has anyone who has been implicated, including BJP leaders, including uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, who was a prime minister at one point in India's uh, government, has any of those figures no, no. who are associated with the destruction of, of a property ever faced any legal consequences if we're talking about law and order issues? So there has been a trial which has been going on for quite a while for when it comes to the issue of uh, demolition of the Babri Masjid. Senior BJP leaders like Mr. L. K. Adwani, the former Deputy Prime Minister, and also the President of the party. Then you have another one, Mr. Murli Manohar Joshi, then you have uh, some allies of the BJP from the Shiv Sena, which is at war at the moment in Maharashtra. Their leaders were also being implicated. But you know, the thing is that it's so slow and uh, nothing really much has happened, despite the fact that today's Supreme Court judgment declares that uh, what happened uh, in, on 6th of December 1992 was a clear violation of the Supreme Court order. They restrained people from getting in. And despite that, you know, they got in and they brought down. I mean, it happened in front of our eyes and it was like so traumatic. But uh, with passage of 
a lot. And I'm sure with the, the new judgment that is going to be announced, uh, the pace of whether we are able to find a closure on the, uh, about the criminality of this entire act would uh, ever happen. Now, we understand a board of trustees is going to be appointed. Um, are we basically looking at the BJP party, which is, of course, the central government and forms the government of the state of Uttar Pradesh? Do they get to pick the members of this board of trustees? Absolutely. I mean, the entire burden has been put on the government to, put, to constitute a board of trustees. And in fact, if you look at it, there is something called the Ram Janabhumi Nyas, which is actually a trust, which has been also, hand, uh, which is the one which will be beefed up or uh, populated by the government about who should be in it. So there is, there is, a, a, you know, it's basically the government which will, for, you know, acquire 2.77 acres of land plus the 67 acres they already have. So there is a huge land which will be available for, as they kept on saying, a magnificent Hindu temple, a Ram temple. So uh, it is going to be a government thing. So the trust is going to work under the government instructions or supervision. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your analysis. And India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has tweeted appealing for calm. Whatever decision the Supreme Court arrives at on Ayodhya, it will not be a victory or defeat of anyone. I appeal to the countrymen that all of us prioritize that this decision should further strengthen India's great traditions of peace, unity and goodwill.